Well, my collection started with one simple postcard uh, when I was with uh, Pillsbury's uh, paper bag conversion plant operation down in Wellsburg, West Virginia. I received a postcard from a fellow back in Minneapolis, which was a, a card showing the A-mill from about 1923. Uh, this card was uh, what really got the whole thing rolling. The thing that really struck me was the information and the uh, wonderful graphics on postcards and trade cards. And I found uh, many of these at flea markets in that West Virginia and Southern Ohio and East, or Western Pennsylvania area when I was in corporate traveling to the plants. Uh, they were long days, but usually on the way uh, to the airport when I was finished, I'd find some time to go search the area. I, I got to a point where I could almost sense when there was something uh, in the shop that I would go through. I would walk through very fast in two direction, go around the shop one way and then turn around and go the other way. So I would see everything from a different view. You just find so many things as you collect that you didn't realize were available. And those were the, the really special things. All of a sudden something would come up you couldn't imagine existed. Uh, one of which was a large brass sign from the Pillsbury building, which uh, was uh, removed by the maintenance people. There were two of them, and it's kind of an educational process. You see how uh, there's a general trend of advertising over the different decades, uh, such as the Art Deco artwork. And the, the two big advertisers in this area uh, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, were Washburn, Crosby, and Pillsbury. Uh, they kind of had opposing slogans, uh, whereas Washburn Crosby came up with eventually, why not now, for their gold medal flower. Uh, Pillsbury's response to that was because Pillsbury's best. Uh, very interesting to follow that, and uh, you can date things that are undated by virtue of the artwork. Once I uh, thought I had collected all the Pillsbury things there were, I moved to other mills in Minnesota and when I thought I had all of those, then I moved on to other states and other parts of the country. I think I learned a lesson about condition uh, because when I first started to collect, I would really take everything that I hadn't seen before. And I soon found that the item would turn up again in better condition. So I was constantly upgrading it in my early collecting years. So then I finally learned that you should look for good condition before you collect the first time. Uh, it's really easier and better for you as a collector. Well, you don't have to talk very long to a dealer in antiques to say that eBay changed the whole world for them. Uh, it's a, a totally different approach to collecting. Uh, very few people go really to the shows anymore except the, the ones who are very uh, deeply involved in a particular subject. They are all in alphabetical order in these uh, acid-free albums. I like to look through a magnifier and see the detail of the people, what they're doing. Uh, if there's a sack on the dock, you can read the logo or uh, see the design, that sort of thing. And, and again, that's one of the, the very attractive things about collecting for me is the, the artwork and the color. Uh, it's very interesting and one of the things that pushed me, I think, in the early stages to continue to collect. So although I'll never be uh, called a flower miller, uh, certainly understand the process well from the collecting. Well, over the years, I always hoped that there would be some way to preserve my collection. And uh, certainly when the Mill City Museum was, became a reality, it was, uh, was wonderful to be able to work with the folks there. And, be able to share my collection by donating it. So, <laughs> my wife's going to kill me one of these days. <laughs> I, I won't die a normal death, I know that. <laughs>